let's get it. Hop off a 16 passenger. This is G5. No, this not a challenger. Big one. I keep some members. Yo, 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 it's your boy J Best, and welcome back to the NFL Vault. Today on part two, me and my special guest, my little brother Jerick, will be discussing and previewing the AFC West and the NFC West, following that up with who and what is the biggest threat to Mahomes this upcoming 2024 season to prevent him from getting the first ever 3P in NFL history. Then following that, we'll be discussing what first year head coach will have the most success in 2024. And then after that, we'll be also talking about what rookie will have the most success in 2024. And then to cap off the episode, we'll be giving our bold prediction for this upcoming 2024 season. All right. For those of y'all that read y'all Bible, y'all know that Kane killed eight. Just put two and two together. I'm about to kill Jared. In the debates, in the debates. The vote is open, and we are here today to talk about the AFC West, all right? The division that has been ran by the Chiefs since Mahomes stepped on the scene, but we want to see if this year is going to look a little bit different, all right? So, Jared, let us know who you got as the fourth seed in the AFC West. Uh, Fourth seed in the AFC West, I feel like it's a no-brainer. I got the Broncos. I just don't think that they are uh, – Capable of hanging with the Chiefs or the Chargers and the Raiders, they um they have a quarterback situation. They don't even know who's going to be starting for them for the um season. They have uh they just drafted Bo Nix, but then you go out and get Zach Wilson. Um, I just don't think that's a smart move. I feel like if you wanted Bo Nix, then let that be his team, but don't bring in another young guy to um possibly compete with them. And they have another quarterback on the roster. And um, they have um, okay defense, you know, from what we saw last year in this towards the second half of the season. Their defense was pretty good. You know, they have the best cornerback in the league, Patrick Sertain. Um, but outside of that, I don't think that the defense of side of the ball is good enough to keep them in games like uh, Pittsburgh Steelers last year, having that dominant defense that's able to keep them in games whenever the offense is slacking. So I just think that they're going to be the last team in the division. Uh, I agree. I'm gonna go with the Broncos. Um, the only reason I'm, I want to say the Raiders are so bad, but the Broncos just when you look at their roster, they don't have enough talent. Um, and there's a QB competition right now. But let's just assume that Bo Nix is going to start. He doesn't have the weapons around him that's gonna make his rookie year easy at all. Right, Cortland Sutton to me is like a tier three kind of receiver. He's their number one. Right, Tim Patrick coming off an injury, we don't know if he's anywhere near the same. And when he was there, he was like a tier four. Like, they don't, they don't have a star out there that make his job easier. And even with Javante Williams in the backfield, their run game is not strong enough to make his transition easy. But I do think that this is the year where Broncos fans need to just sit back, relax, and they're playing for next year. All right, this year, all you're doing is trying to see who's going to be on the roster next year. Y'all not competing for nothing. Bo Nix might be, the, might be y'all's guy. But as of right now, what can you do? He doesn't have anything on the offense. So, like you said, defensively, Patrick Sertain, but other than that, who? No difference makers, no playmakers on that defense. So, uh, this is going to be a year where, like I say, you're preparing for 2025. All right, 2024, just scratch that out. Right now, you want Bo Nix to get his feet wet, and then kind of like last year with C.J. Stroud, when I said that um, C.J. is going to really benefit from not having a great receiver because he'll go through all his reads and all his progression. I mean, Nico Collins over the year became his number one, Right, Tank Dale showed flashes, but C.J. Stroud still didn't have that superstar receiver, so he was able to go through his reads. So with Sean Payton, I think he'll be able to help Bo Nix be able to go through his reads and everything. Then next year, you bring in talent to where it's going to make things a lot easier. So it's going to be a rough year, but you're preparing for the future Bronco country, all right? Um, Jerry, who you got finishing um, at number three in this division? Number three in this division might come as a shocker to much people, but I have the Chargers, if I'm being honest. I just – I don't see much from that Chargers team that makes me say that they could compete with the Chiefs to be number one, let alone to be number two. Um, I feel like, yeah, you have Justin Herbert. He's a great quarterback. He just signed him to a big uh, contract. But with um, Harbaugh coming in, we know he likes to run the football a lot. We know that um, he likes to just ground and pound where defense is down, which is a good thing, but I just don't think that – they have the squad that's set up for that, um, if I'm being honest. You know, they went out and got alignment with their first-round draft pick, which is okay, but you um, lost Keenan Allen and you lost Mike Williams. You didn't replace anybody at that receiver spot, which tells me that you're going to be relying a lot on your run game, which in this league, 
you still have to be able to pass the ball. You can have the greatest running game in the league, but if you cannot pass the ball, then it's going to be a problem. And you have a Justin Herbert, why not go out and get guys to make him better? Why not go out and get guys to really allow him to compete? And then on the defensive side, defense is kind of getting old. I mean, you got Joey Bosa, you got Khalil Mack, but they're getting older. I mean, yeah, Khalil Mack had a good year last year, but I'm pretty sure it's because one of those weeks he had like five, four sacks in one week. And that's why he was high on the uh, sack number. Joey Bosa, over the years, he's been consistent, but it's not enough to make me say it's going to change the way that team is. And then the secondary side, I mean, they're decent. You got Derwin James back there. Um, but outside of that, it's not really – I don't think it's good enough to put up a fight for second or first in this division, especially with – like I said, with Harbaugh, that's what it all comes down to, honestly. I mean, you go out and get Gus Edwards, and you brought in J.K. Dobbins, if I'm um, not mistaken. But those aren't guys that can lead your team to victories with you not going out and getting talent for the wide receiver spot. So I just feel like they're going to come in third, and it's just a year for them to see where Harbaugh really puts this team and how they're going to get in the right direction moving forward. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Raiders to finish third. Um, this was a. It was almost like a Cinderella story last year, but it wasn't because they didn't win anything. But you saw a different team in the first half of the season and the second half of the season, right? Josh McDaniel was there. They said that they wasn't getting along him and the players. They just wanted him out, right? Just a bad vibe. It was just it was all all around bad. So then they bring Antonio Pierce in. They go five and four down the stretch. And when he came, it was just, you can see they was alive again, right? It's almost like you remember last year when the Steelers fired, fired Matt Canada, that first game, the offense looked great, right? Because you kind of got that poison out the locker room. Um, same thing last year. Antonio Pierce comes, you get that poison out with Josh McDaniels. It's kind of an energy thing. It's kind of a momentum thing. And that's why he was able to finish five and four. They beat the Chiefs on Christmas, right? That was their Super Bowl. But I want to see what they're going to do for a full season now. Right, that momentum is gone, right? Antonio Pierce is the guy now. So now you have a full season. This team, kind of like the Broncos, what am I looking at? On defense, outside of Max Crosby, I can't name another player on this defense side of the ball. And I know Antonio Pierce talking about the Jordan rules or Patrick Mahomes and all that. It's not going to cut it if you don't have the talent. Y'all can have the mentality all y'all want to, but if y'all don't have the talent on the defensive side and players to make plays, you're not going to do nothing. Then offensively, you go and you get Garner Minshew. Right. And to me, they just crapped out when they did not get a quarterback in the draft. Right. They didn't get a quarterback in the draft. They panicked. They draft Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia. When you just drafted Michael Mayer last year from Notre Dame. So a team like, for example, I keep bringing up the Steelers, but the Steelers, if the Steelers will get Gardner Minshew this year, right? Gardner Minshew can help you compete. He's proven that he's a, he can start in this league. Last year, we saw him in Indianapolis. They almost made the playoffs. Right. But what did Indianapolis also have? They had a run game. All right. Something that when you go to Indianapolis, you're going to say, OK, Jonathan Taylor, we're not going to let you eat. So Gardner Mitchell can eat off the play action. Now he's a second option with the Raiders. Who's their running back now? Now that Josh Jacobs is gone, they don't have somebody back there. And I'm scared. With all due respect, I'm not worried about Zamir White at all. So going against the Raiders offense, it's going to be easy to game plan for them because they don't have that run game. They don't have somebody to take the pressure off Gardner Minshew. So I haven't seen Gardner Minshew in the offense where he got to make plays, right? I think Devontae Adams' number is going to go down this year, unfortunately. And then they don't have anything around that. Yes, they talk about Brock Bowers, right? Talk about him all the time. But once again, without that run game, I don't see this pass game being effective. And I think this team is going to be bad. I wanted to put them fourth. But the Broncos just have a worse roster than the Raiders. I don't believe in the Raiders at all. I think, like I said, last year was a momentum thing. You saw that five and four. Y'all got excited. Remember Max Crosby said, if you don't hire Antonio Pierce, I'm leaving. Right? They got their guy. But this year going to be a struggle because, once again, looking at this roster, you see Max Crosby, you see Devontae Adams. After that, who's the star? Nobody. Who's the, who's a mini star? Nobody. Right, Brock Bowers might be a great tight end, but I do think that it's going, they're going to struggle because there's no run game, which means, hey, we're not going to stack the box. We're going to make Garden Mystery struggle. So I think they're going to struggle all year with that, all right? Um, next, uh, at the second seed, who you got? So obviously I have the – putting the Chargers third, I have the Las Vegas Raiders at second. And, um, you know, 
it was a toss up between them and the Chargers, but I just don't I don't have faith in the Chargers team at all. And with the Raiders, with getting rid of that poison and that cancer that Josh McDaniels was, and bringing in um, new head coach who gave your team life last year. Now he has a whole year with these guys. He had a whole off season to let them know what the plan was and to get the plan going. Now, like you said, they didn't go draft the quarterback, which was a little disappointing and can hurt their um, chances. But mind you, Gardner Minshew, he's no scrub now. Gardner Minshew, he's just an average quarterback. Not at all. Not at all. He's an average quarterback. He's better than what you had last year in Jimmy G. Okay, he is, I'll tell you that. He's better than Jimmy Garoppolo. And so having Gardner Minshew, he's going to give you consistent average numbers, which when you have Devontae Adams, who is by far a top five receiver in this league, still without a good quarterback, that's going to make things a whole lot easier. And then having Brock Bowers and you drafted Michael Mayer last year, let's not forget about that. So now whenever you're just focused on Devontae Adams, you have those in the middle um, threats with those two tight ends, and you have Jacoby um, Myers, who let's not. I'm not saying he's such a um, dangerous weapon, but playing alongside Devontae Adams, we've seen him get better, and we see that he is going to be a reliable target for Gardner Minshew. Now, going back to the defensive side of the ball, you said all they have is Max Crosby. Max Crosby is the top five edge rusher in this league, respectfully, and so. He's going to make that whole defense a lot easier. But let's not act like they don't have Tyree Wilson, who they drafted in last year's draft. Tyree Wilson, young player who can get better learning from Max Crosby, and they just went out and signed Christian Wilkins. So now you're making that defense, that front, a lot better, which if you can get pressure to the quarterback in this league, you can win football games. On the back side, they're a little, little shaky, with their um, secondary players, I know they had a um, breakout player last year who um, came up and started making good plays towards the end of the year. But having that pass rush is really going to set the standard for that team with Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins, and Tyree Wilson. So I do think that they're going to have a lot of games where it's one, two possession losses. And then they're going to have a lot of games where it's one, two, two possession wins. I do think they're going to be that gritty team that finds ways to win at the end of the game. And that's why I have them at second in this division. Just to push back on that just a little bit. Uh, the, I was last year when I post draft, post the 2023 draft, I came out here, I banged on the table and said the Raiders understood the assignment. They went and got an edge rusher to pair with Max Crosby. Last year, I didn't see Tyree do anything. Now, he might be a late bloomer. Right, all of them don't come in and, and, and kill things right away, no doubt about it. But until I see it, I'm not a firm believer, right? Yes, they did add Christian Wilkins, but back to Gardner Minshew, he was a good quarterback last year with that run game. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're right, they got Jacoby Myers, Devontae Adams, and Brock Bowers is that guy. Yeah, they got Brock Bowers and Michael Mayer, but it's Gardner Minshew because the way it looks, he got to drop back 30 times a game to produce points. And I don't know if Gardner Minshew is going to be – because he's – like you said, he's an average quarterback. He can't start in this league. Will he be successful playing like that versus playing on the team where, okay, we're going to run the ball, but whenever you stack the box and when you buy the play action, I'm going to kill you with that. Like Jimmy Garoppolo last year, he wasn't good, but at least Jimmy had Josh Jacobs back there to where we played the Raiders, okay, we're not going to let Josh Jacobs eat. So Jimmy could eat off the play action. Jimmy just washed now. Right. So even Aiden, Aiden um, O'Connell came in and he was able to eat a little bit off the play action because I'm worried about Josh Jacobs. I'm not worried about Zamir White. That's my pushback against Gardner Mission. But you good? Nothing, nothing, nothing to say about that? I mean, adding Christian Wilkins and Max Crosby, it's going to make things just a lot easier for Tyler Wilson. Now he's matched up one on one and the different schemes that I've seen um, Antonio Pierce put together is just I I'm a firm believer that this team is gonna they're not gonna but this is a division where them being second doesn't mean they're gonna be a good football team. I feel like my opinion on the Chargers, my evaluation of the Chargers and the Broncos is gonna be so bad that the Chargers and Broncos are gonna be under five hundred and I have a feeling that the Raiders might be sitting at or just under 500. Like this this division is it's just not that good if we're being quite honest. And so that is why I feel like they can still come in second because of how bad I feel like the Chargers and Broncos are going to have a season. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I agree, I agree with that. Um but second, I have the Chargers 
And only is out of respect to Jim. I got to respect Jim's track record. I got to respect the fact that when he went to the 49ers, he made them a good football team, right? He got them to the Super Bowl. He wasn't able to beat the Ravens, right? But then he went to Michigan. And I feel like before he got to Michigan, I wasn't hearing about Michigan like that in football before he got there. Then he got there and kind of transcended and uplifted that program. It might have been a good program, but he made them a great program, right? He uplifted them, and they was – not in the title contention every year, but they was always in the talks, right? When he was there, finally got his ring. Now he's coming back to the NFL and pairing him with Justin Herbert. Now I know it's a lot of people 50, 50 on Justin Herbert, right? Cause the talent is there, right? You can argue he's a top five talented quarterback in this league, right? The arm is there. Everything is there, but the wins is not there. The production is not there. He only has half of what it takes. You had a talent and a production. He only has the talent. Um, but when I look at the fact that they got Joe Alt in the first round, right, and they compare him with uh, Rashawn Slater, they got two good tackles. I'm assuming Joe Alt will be a really good tackle. Hey, for those of y'all that play Madden, we all know who Joe Alt is, all right? He goes top 10 every time when we do a draft for the 2024 um, year. But I just think that Jim and Justin combined, yes, they lost Keenan. They lost Mike. They lost Austin Eckler, right? They lost pretty much their whole offense. Right. But I just like I like them more than I like. I like Jim and Justin more than I like Sean and Bo and more than I like Antonio and Gardner Mission. Right. So I do think that and this might be one of those surprise teams that nobody's looking at. And for some reason, they end up one game out the playoffs or two games out the playoffs. It's possible. Like if I had to roll the dice on a team that I think could be that surprise team this year, I would not be surprised at all if it's Jim. And just because nobody paying attention to them. Everybody thinks they don't have an offense, right? But when you have Gus Edwards and hopefully J.K. Dobbins will stay healthy. Because when J.K. was healthy in Baltimore, he was low-key a problem. Low-key a problem. But if he can stay healthy, him and Gus will be a great pair, I think. So they can get the run game going. Maybe they can eat in the pass. If Justin Herbert is that talented, that I think he can make it happen. Um, they don't have any crazy receivers, right? They did they draft a receiver from Georgia. Um, they also had D.J. Chark. So it's not a crazy offense, but like you said, Jim likes to run the ball. If they can build a run game with Gus and with J.K., J.K. can stay healthy. And I think Justin Herbert is very talented to where if we go against the Chargers, we got to worry about the run. He might do some damage in the past with these average to below average receivers. So it's just, like I said, I trust this more than I trust the Raiders and the Broncos. And mind you, they still have Khalil. They still have Joey. What, what's left of Joey? Because Joey, like you say, every year he doesn't aggress. I don't know who this is anymore, but they still have Khalil. They still have that. Um, and I think they have the, um, when you look at the best two defensive players on each team, I think they still have the, they still have the W over the Raiders and over the Broncos. All right. But let's go ahead and let's talk about the team we got winning the division. Jared's best friend, Patrick Mahomes. Number one seed in the AFC West. Why? You said the reason why. Uh, Patrick Mahomes. That's it's just that simple. But I'm um, that's it's it's much more than that though. They have a um they have a defense that we saw just take a complete step forward um when it comes to statistics last year. When it comes to just their presence on the field, uh, this was a defense that was um, top five in most categories. Uh, along with the good defenses of the league, such as the Steelers and the um, 49ers, this defense that showed that they can hang with some of the toughest offenses. Yeah, you lost to Jerry Sneed, but I don't think that's going to do much damage. I feel like uh, still having Trent McDuffie, who can guard most of the number ones in this league, even though he does play a lot of slots sometimes, I feel like he's going to do more so on that outside, um, on that island with your number one receiver, who I feel like he has pretty good odds against – and then you just got Chris Jones. Chris Jones, you were able to get him back. You know, um, him and George Kalafis, it's a dynamic duo. And if we're being quite honest, I'm taking that duo over Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack just because of what I've seen from the past years. George Kalafis, he has a higher ceiling moving forward. We've seen him get better over the years that he's been playing alongside Chris Jones. You still have Nick Bolton, who's progressing to be one of the best linebackers in the league. So I honestly feel like – and then – Andy Reid. You have Andy Reid. You have the best coach in the division. You have, if not, one of the best coaches in the AFC and in the entire league. It's just so many factors and variables in addition to Mahomes and Kelsey. And then just to mention that offense, Addie Marquise, Hollywood Brown. 
um, going out and getting Xavier Worthy. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Because Marquise, he's a he is such a deep threat that people aren't realizing that if you put him in the right position, you have to worry about Travis Kelsey. You have to worry about Rasheed Rice when he comes off suspension. And then you have to worry about the run game. Isaiah Pacheco, who has proven that he is their RB1 and their offensive line, who has gotten better around Mahomes. You're not going to be looking for Hollywood Brown. And that's the scary thing. You're, you're teams allowed Andy Reid and the Chiefs to go out and add more weapons to this offense. They added Marquise Brown and they added Xavier Worthy. Xavier Worthy, the fastest player in the draft, he can give Tyreek Hill a run for his money when it comes to running that 40 yard dash. And I feel like the speed of this team added to Mahomes' ability. They're going to, honestly, if I'm being quite honest, I have a team going 5 and 1 in the division. Just because I see them losing a game to the Raiders, which after seeing the little gimmick that the Raiders pulled off, I wouldn't be surprised if they swept the Raiders too. So it's either five and one or they're sweeping the division. So it's just easily and then Mahomes is gonna have an MVP type year. We've seen what he does whenever he comes off of a quote unquote bad to mid year for Mahomes standards. We know that he comes back with a lot of um extra motivation to go out and prove that he is still the number one quarterback without a doubt with people um hyping of the Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. He's showing that he's in a tier of his own. So it's just it's the Chiefs undoubtedly number one. Um it's one hundred percent the the Chiefs. Um and oh just to piggyback on the Chargers real quick, real quick. Um they, last year they drafted Quinn Johnson in the first round and he did not pan out at bust. all. Complete and, bust. Um, yeah, slow, hey, slow down. That's that's why I think I'm gonna cross my fingers and I'm gonna hope just for my sake that he'll step in them shoes a little bit of Mike Williams. Just a, I won't even say Keenan Allen at all. I'm gonna say maybe maybe he had maybe this is his, this is chance right here because now you really the only you the only receiver that was here last year, right? DJ Chark is new. Right, or boy from Georgia knew you only one that was here last year, so you kind of still have a Joshua Palmer. They still got Josh Palmer. That's true, but I don't, I don't view him as a number one at all. I, I don't think better he, than Quentin. I don't think he can be a number one. That's what I'm saying. I think even if he had a bad year last year, but from what I saw in college his senior year at TCU, I think that his ceiling is higher than Josh Palmer. Josh Palmer, one of them guys that give it on his best day, he'll give you like 95 yards. You know what I'm saying, Quentin. I don't know. I think his ceiling is high. He's just not living up to it. And he might not ever live up to it, but I'm hoping that he does, just for my sake. All right, but um, turn to the Chiefs. You got the best quarterback in the division. You got the best coach in the division. You got the best offensive. Uh, actually, I take that back. You have arguably the best offensive weapon outside the off- outside the quarterback in the division, right, between Travis Kelsey and Devontae Adams, right? You, wanna, you can have that argument any day. Um, if you take Mahomes out of the division – they probably had the best player in the division in Chris Jones. Right. I wouldn't I wouldn't put Devontae Adams over Chris only because Devontae, his production is dependent on the quarterback versus Chris and go out there and just make plays. All right. So this team is just head and shoulders above the rest. And like you said, they might fumble one game, like like they do sometimes. Right. Might be the Raiders, right? Because they just hype that day, or might this year might be the Chargers. You never know. Could be the Broncos. Last year was the Broncos. Right, so they could drop a game, but come on now, this division is too easy. I think that um, for one, Rasheed Rice better be suspended. They they haven't issued a suspension out yet, but he better be suspended. If they suspended players for betting, we definitely go suspend players for driving 119 miles per hour, causing a six car crash. All right, that is that is that is uh, you. Only defense, I don't think he. I don't think he was the. I don't think he's behind the wheel. That's the only defense in the argument. He should be suspended, but I don't think he's behind the wheel. So that if might he was, be why. If he was behind the wheel, then why was he suspending him? Cause he, he the car's in his name. He was involved in it. But he was still he was still there. But I strongly believe he was not. I don't think he was behind the wheel. But if you, yeah, if I if I'm driving the car 119 miles per hour, we getting crashed. Why would you get in trouble if you sitting beside me, or if you in the car with me, or if it's your car? Because 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 it's, it's, it's his car. Like I said, I think that's why he hasn't. I think that's why a suspension hasn't been put out. Of course, there's going to be one. I think because of the circumstances. But I do strongly believe I heard that he was not the. Um, driver behind the wheel so we'll see how it plays out but he should definitely be suspended he should well if, if he was behind the wheel he 100 percent should be suspended but that and that that might actually work out in chief's favor because now it gives you a chance to see more of xavier worthy right everybody talking about him because you know the four the 40 time and all that 
that could give him more time to um, build some chemistry with him. And not only that, but with Marquise coming in, Marquise actually hurt. Um, I don't know exactly how long he out, but he did dislocate his shoulder, I believe. So he's going to be out for a little bit. So once again, Xavier Worthy, you get more attention. You get more um, time to um, build a chemistry with Mahomes. And, of course, you got Travis Kelsey. Yeah, this team, what are we talking about? Then you got Isaiah something, Yara Pacheco, who stuck holes in the ground every time he run the ball. Like, you got, like, hey, it's a good team. It's a good squad. They won the past two Super Bowls for a reason. Uh, so I think it's just too easy of a division. All right, so let's just go ahead and go to the next division. Um, the NFC West, who recently been dominated by the 49ers, but one of us might, might not have them win the division this year. We're going to see. Um, the number four seed, Jared, who you got? Um, I think it's just simple. It's, um, it's right there. Everybody knows it. It is on the Cardinals. Uh, you know, you have – you're getting Kyler Murray back for a whole year, hopefully. Um, you know – He's uh, had some health problems in the past, but when he is on the field, I don't think Kyler Murray is a um, bad quarterback. Some people think he's um, mid or average. I think he's above average quarterback who can get the job done. I mean, we saw what he did in uh, 2021, I believe, if that if I'm not mistaken, whenever he took them to the playoffs. You know, they lost to the Los Angeles Chargers, the Super Bowl champs that year who had a super team. So I think that Kyler Murray gets too much negativity, and but they're still going to be last in the division. I mean, you know, you have um, – a, this is your coach's second year, and unfortunately, with the roster that they've built, I don't think it's enough for them to compete in the division. And but you know, you drafted Marvin Harrison Jr., who man's incredible. I mean, you're gonna see, you're definitely gonna see a lot out of him this year, and we're gonna see how he can pair up being that number one receiver. But outside of that, their roster, if you look at it, it's no names that you see. But when you looked at their football games last year, it was a scrappy team. They got some scrappy wins that they shouldn't have gotten last year. There's some games that they put pressure on the other team and they were able to come out with the win. But this is just, this is like a, it's not a true rebuild because you still have Kyler Murray, but it's still a rebuild. They're still trying to build around Kyler Murray and see where they can get. Although Kyler Murray is not the youngest quarterback there is, but he is still on the younger side of things. Um, it's just the cards, the cards is against them. That's all it is. And they they don't have enough. That's it. Yeah, you you hit the um nail on the head with that with they don't have enough. It's kinda like it's like the Broncos, but they're they're better than the Broncos, obviously. If you look at the roster, they like low key, if you think about it, their best player might be the player they just drafted. If you really think about it. Which is crazy. Like the best player on your team is is a receiver you just drafted, not an edge rusher. Not a quarterback, a receiver you just drafted might be the best player on your team. And um, I think Cardinals fans don't get the same speech that Broncos fans got. Look, this year is not y'all year. Y'all are building. We're building, right? We're looking forward to next year. There's a couple teams in the league where you just, as a fan, you need to say, all right, what happens this year, we're just looking for what we can move forward with. The Cardinals believe that Colin Murray is their guy. They believe that I'm not necessarily a fan of him. I don't think that's the right decision. But if that's what if that's what you decided. Then they decided that's their guy this year they're looking at Marvin. This year they're looking at who else are we going to keep around him and Marvin moving forward. All right, they they um, drafted running back from Florida State. I'm trying to think, Trey Benson, I believe. Mm -hmm. Trey Benson, right? Are you going to be our guy moving forward? We're going to keep James Conner, right? It's going to be – they're looking for spots for next year. Um, Jonathan Gannon, who came from the Eagles the year before last, uh, was a defensive coordinator with the Super Bowl. I thought – he shouldn't have got a head coaching job because I thought it was more so of the Eagles had stars on the defense. So the stars kind of made him look good. But like you said, last year, it was scrappy. It wasn't, it wasn't a, okay, we're going to Arizona. We're going to just play the backups, right? They trash. No, you had to actually, you was going to scrap with them a little bit. And if they didn't have enough, you just going to beat them. But it might've caught you slipping and it might've beat you. Like the Steelers, they caught, caught us slipping Beat the Steelers, right? They had a couple wins like that last year where they caught teams slipping. They was able to get the dub. Uh, so I think it's going to be a team that, once again, future. We're looking at the future. All right, uh, Marvin Harrison, he might come in and might make an instant impact because he's playing that receiver position. I think receivers have the easiest transition only because they're so talented coming out of college. So I think that he's going to come in kind of like Jamar Chase did. Might come in and make instant impact. It might be able to build that connection with – Kyler Murray. But like you said, look at the rest of the roster. Who they got? Absolutely nobody. All right. Um, um, next, we got the third seed. Who you got? 
Uh, I think another no-brainer, if you um, really pay attention, is the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, you know, you have Geno Smith, who's a reliable quarterback. He's proven that he can be better than a Gardner Minshew in this league. He's not a top-tier talent, but he's consistent enough to get the job done. Uh, you got DK Metcalf. You have Jackson Smith and Jigba, who, coming off of last year, from what you saw of him, you saw that there is there's a spark there. There is You're going to have a guy that is going to be your number one if DK, um, once DK starts to decline, knowing that he's he's not the youngest, but he's still not old yet. And so you're going to have somebody after him and to pair along with him. You still got Tyler Lockett. Um, Kenneth Walker, who if he can stay healthy, he's proven to be a good run, um, rusher. But defensively, outside of Devon Witherspoon, um, they have another corner. Can't really think of his name right now. There is um, not really – Nothing stands out to me on the defensive side. I mean, yeah, they went out and drafted uh, Byron Murphy from um, defensive tackle from Texas, but I just don't think it's enough for them to compete with the Rams and the 49ers. They have a new head coach this year after Pete Carroll um, took a step down and retired, so we're going to see what he's able to do, but I just feel like this is a division where you have too much talent on those two other teams to actually put up a fight with them. Hopefully they can try and snag a wild card spot, knowing that the NFC isn't the strongest um, conference in the football league. But I just, I don't see too much for them. Although they're going to be a solid team, they're just going to be third in the division. I think this is a team that was one move away this offseason from me saying that they might have a chance to get in the playoffs. I think if they would have hired Mike Vrabel, Instead of Mike McDonald from um, Denver, I mean, sorry, from Baltimore, and then we got Mike Vrabel who came from Tennessee, I think they would have had a chance. If you look at his roster, it's not bad. It's not It's not bad. It's just average. And I think that great coaching would have made an average roster better, right? Would have made them in the, especially above 500 for sure, and probably battling for that seven seed. I think Mike Vrabel could have did that, but they did, and they went with, a brand new face, and it might be. Um, am I saying his name right? Mike McDonald. I think I'm saying his name right. I think so. I think I'm saying his name right. Deep as a quarter from um, Baltimore. I'm bad. Had a brain fart. All right, but I think if Mike Vrabel was a step in, I think he could have took this average team and made them one of the teams that nobody wants to see in the playoffs. All right, Geno Smith. He's not great, but he's experienced. Right, he got he got he got them years under him. Right, you got DK Metcalf. Like I said, JSN is descending. He's one of the receivers that's gonna be a number one one day. Right, you still and then your third receiver is Tyler Lockett. Like Tyler Lockett is not a scrub. He's better than the average receiver in my opinion. So that's your third receiver. Then if Kenneth Walker can stay healthy, you have him running the ball. You got Noah Font at tight end. You have a pretty. It's a nice offense. It's not gonna compete with the best offenses like the 49ers and the Eagles and stuff like that. But it can compete with the middle class offenses. And then defensively, like you said, they don't really have much outside the secondary. Secondary is all right, right? Um, Byron Murphy, who they drafted, I actually read an article the day that said he might be a monster. I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna pan out, but if he is a monster, then there you go. You got a star in D line. So um, I think that this was a team that they just would have hired the right coach. I think he could have elevated them to being a seven C or just fighting for the seven C, but. Because they didn't, I don't see them having um, a lot of success this year. And it's really because of who's around them, the other teams. It's not really their fault. It's just the other teams, right? All right, so um, the second seed, who you got? Uh, this might be where our um, standings uh, take a little turn like it did um, in the last division. But I have the uh, Los Angeles Rams. I just do. I think that, you know, having Matthew Stafford, who is proven that he can be a top quarterback in this league, um, you got Puka Nakua, who really just had a breakout year last year when um, Cooper Cup went down. He showed that he can be that number one guy on a NFL roster. And you're going to have, hopefully, a healthy Cooper Cup this year. You got Kyron Williams, who came from out of nowhere and just proved to be a, a great tailback for that offense to have sitting next to Matthew Stafford to take off some of that pressure from Matthew Stafford. And then defense aside, let's just say you lost the arguably greatest defensive player in this generation. People, some people might say J.J. Watt. I'm going to say Aaron Donald. You lost Aaron Donald. But you did go out and get Jared Verse from Florida State to try and minimize the loss from your pass rush, who I think Jared Verse is going to have a monster year this year. And then you – um. 
take in fact who they had. Who's who did they draft last year on the um front? Byron Young. Byron Young, who I saw some potential there. So you got Byron Young and Jared Verse. Hopefully they can pan out to be a young duo like a Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack in the other um conference. And so defensively you just you just hope that their defense can do enough. Losing Aaron Donald is major. And you're gonna have the offense to where you can honestly go head to head with any offense in the league. Having two number one receivers, having a quarterback that's proven that he is consistently at the top of his game, and having Kyron Williams. To me, honestly, if I had to compare this offense to a team, I would say it's almost like the Cincinnati Bengals, if we're just being quite honest. You have running, they had a running back in Joe Mixon. You have Kyron Williams who can hang with – he's shown that he can hang with some of the top backs when it comes to stats and production in this league. And then you have two number ones on the outside, Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup, just like they have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. And then Matthew Stafford, like I said, he's proven that he can be a top five to top seven quarterback in this league. So I just think that they're going to be a great team. They're obviously going to be the fifth seed um, because they're not going to win the division because they just – I don't think they have enough to beat the 49ers. That's something. Well, I'm gonna be bold. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do what I believe is going to happen. I have the 49ers finish the second in this division. Wow. Now, everybody that has been with me since I started this podcast, y'all know I am a huge Kyle Shanahan fan, right? That's my dog. I throw the fitted hats on, scheming up offenses. Love him. But he lost some respect from me when you fired Steve Brooks after the Super Bowl, my man. Accountability, take it. You 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 fumbled the bag a little bit, right? Your defense was containing Mahomes. Your defense was keeping Mahomes from being great. Like if you look back at Super Bowl, Mahomes was not great. He was good, but he was not great. The defense didn't let him be great. So you, on the other hand, when it was holding Mahomes down, you could not produce points. Simple as that. You're supposed to be the best play caller in the league, which I still believe you are, but you didn't. I think you took the ball out of Christian McCaffrey hands a little bit too much. But that's just me. But you fire C books after you didn't take accountability. All right. So that's that's strike one. Strike two, this offseason, Trent Williams been holding out. Right? It's a it's a whole mess with Brandon Ayuk. Right. So you got a little drama going on in the locker room. That's strike two. Strike three, Christian McCaffrey has a little growing issue right now. Or a calf issue. It's a groin or a calf issue right now. And then the receiver they drafted in the first round, I believe his name is Rick. Help me out, Ricky. I cannot I think, can, of right can't think of it right now. Yes. He got drafted in the first round, and guess what? He's got hurt like three times already in his training camp. So he's dealing with injuries, he's dealing with drama, and he got a coach that don't take accountability. I just feel like it's bad vibes going into this 2024 season. They have the talent. Don't get it twisted. It's one of the best rosters in the league. But the team I had at number one, and there's reasons why I believe in that team a little bit more than I believe in this team. Like I said, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Fred Warren. It's hard to put them at number two. But I'm going to be bold, and I'm going to say that they're going to finish second in this division. I'm sorry, Kyle Shanahan. So your number one team is clearly the 49ers. Tell me why I'm wrong. Um, You had a lot of great points. I will give you that. You had a lot of great points with um, Kyle Shanahan not taking accountability. If we're being honest, since real he's quick, real been, quick. It's, Rick, it's Ricky Purcell. That's who he is. I had it right. Ricky Purcell. That's right. Um, Robert Seaver out of Florida. Yeah, that's yep. right. That's cool. him. But um, Kyle Shanahan, and honestly, in big games, he hasn't really shown up. Like you said, um, he kind of dropped the ball a little bit. But it's a new season. It's a new year. Yes, you're having um, Kyle Shanahan actually came out and said they have 26 injuries, and the season hasn't even started yet. Boom. With Christian McCaffrey, with um, some of the other key pieces to that locker room, but it's an eighteen week season. You have to play eighteen. You have to play seventeen games in eighteen weeks. So this is a team that with so they have a lot of depth. I feel like this team is a team that has depth. Yes, you have a Brandon Ayuk situation that hopefully you feel like you can get um, sorted out. Debo Samuel just came out today and said that um, Brandon Ayuk will be with the team this year. Me as a Steelers fan, I hope that's not the case. But, you know, if that if he does stay with that team, that's just even more of a reason for them to be number one. In my honest opinion, Brock Purdy, a lot of people would say he is a 
he is a product of his circumstance. He is a he's a average quarterback who got thrown into the best offense in the league with Christian McCaffrey, with George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. You have people like Trent Williams at tackle who can really protect you. But my honest opinion from watching Brock Purdy, he's only get, he's only gotten better since he's first stepped foot on that field. And you have, in my honest opinion, outside of Mahomes and outside of TJ Watt, you have the best player in football, Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey is just, he's such a game changer. And so if he can get this growing or um, calf injury handled and um, get healthy when it comes to that middle to back stretch part of the season when they are really going to need him, I don't think that the Rams can touch them because of what the Rams lost in Aaron Donald and that defense. Aaron Donald is such a game changer when it comes to football that teams had to scheme. You have to scheme for one man. There's not a lot of players that you can say you have to scheme for that one man. So that takes a lot of pressure off of Kyle Shanahan when it comes to calling plays against a team like the Chargers, which is why, in my opinion, they're going to be the Chargers. Like you said, on defense, they have Fred Rams, Warner. Rams, Rams, Wait. Rams, Rams. What the Chargers. You're right. Rams. My fault. That's my fault. The other team in L.A., the Rams. The other team in L.A. That's my bad. A little um, mind went blank there. But, yeah, that's why they're going to beat the Rams. And I feel like they might split games, but I don't think the Rams have enough to – just go against some of the teams they have to play this year. I just honestly don't think with losing Aaron Donald, I feel like that's going to be a big adjustment for their team, for the Rams. And so I think the 49ers are going to walk away with the division, having one of the better defenses in the league with Nick Bosa, Fred Warner. And the list goes on. Drake Greenlaw probably won't be back with this team this year. Probably won't. Hopefully he will, just depending on the severity of his um calf, not calf, Achilles injury. But they do have pieces outside of Dre Greenlaw that have been known to get the job done. So I just think that this 49ers team, the roster's too stacked. They have Kyle Shanahan, Christian McCaffrey. They're going to be number one. Yeah, not, look, I respect that. I'm not going it, – it's not much pushback because I don't blame you for saying that team going to win the division because I'm kind of going out on the limb. And it, it's, I'm not going out on a crazy limb. Like, I'm not saying the Broncos will win the division. I'm talking about a team that – you said you said Kyron Williams proved he can run the best of them. Um, yeah, he was third in rushing yards last year. He had eleven hundred rushing yards, uh, and then he was twelfth in touchdowns, I believe. I look at the big one, the biggest um, aspects of a team: the coach and QB duo. I look at Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy, and I look at Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford. Let me tell you something: it's Week 18, right? The division on the line. You got the Rams. And you got the 49ers. Going to that game, not looking at the rest of the roster, just looking at the coach and the QB. Which duo do you have more faith in in a big game like that? Just looking at the coach and the QB, who you got more faith in? Of course. Of course it's the Rams um, quarterback head coach duo because of the talent that we've seen from Matthew Stafford. Yes. Of course. Yeah, Matthew Stafford, you can argue he could be the best quarterback in the NFC. And we, you can make that argument. Of course, you might have Jalen Hurts. You might have uh, an ascending Jordan Love. Some idiots might say Dak Prescott. But I honestly think that Matthew Stafford could be the best quarterback in this conference. And then Sean McVay, if we look at all the coaches in this conference, him and, like, he's right under Kyle. I think it's only because Kyle is such a really good offensive play caller. But Sean McVay is, too. Sean McVay can dial it up as well. Like you say, he turned Kyron Williams, who nobody had expectations for, to a thousand yard rusher. That's the same thing Kyle Shanahan was doing before he was gifted Christian McCaffrey, right? And then you look at the offense, Puka Nakua, y'all. He came out of nowhere last year. And he didn't just come out of nowhere. He was, and it kind of happened when Cooper Cup got hurt, right? So it's kind of like a blessing in disguise. Remember with the Lakers, when LeBron got hurt and Austin Reeves was able to step up and show his value? Same thing happened last year. Cooper Cup gets hurt. And Puka steps up. But then when Cooper came back, Puka was still doing his thing, right? So I think that you have arguably two number one receivers in Puka and, and, and Cooper Cup. When has Matthew Stafford ever had that? Even like when he had Cooper and Odell, I wouldn't say Odell's the number one in that time. He had good games with the Rams, but I wouldn't say he's the number one, right? Matthew never really had this before. So he has two toys he can play with on the outside, and it's going to be hard to game because you can't double one of them. And you definitely can't double both of them because you're dealing with Sean McVay. So if you double both of them, somebody's going to be open on the field. But it's Tyler Higby, Demarcus Robinson, somebody's going to be open. 
right? And then they still have that run game with um, Kyron Williams. Defensively, you did mention that Aaron Donald is gone. I understand that. Like you said, the best player of this generation, a first ballot Hall of Famer, all of that. But I like the duo of Byron Young and Jared Verse, right? I love it. Like, I didn't know Jared Verse was for the draft. But when I went and I looked at his tape and I checked him out a little bit, he like he going to be a star on that edge. They understood the assignment. Kind of like the Raiders last year, who I think they just didn't. Tyree Wilson didn't, he didn't come through. This year, you got Jared Burst, you got Byron Young, who had eight sacks last year. They gonna get pressure on the QB. Right now, he did lose Raheem Morris, right? Head coach for the Atlanta Falcons. They did lose him, but I believe defensively, they will have enough. They win, they got Shadavius White. If Shadavius White can stay healthy, he's a good corner. If he can stay healthy, that's his biggest problem. He can't stay healthy. All right, but I'm rolling the dice with this, and I think it's really because of the offense. Right, that O-line clearly is good because they produced a thousand yard rusher last year. Right. Keep Matthew Stafford upright and secondaries are gonna have problems with Puka and Cooper. I think it's a really good football team. I think that this is gonna be it really shouldn't be a surprise team because people should know after watching last year that the Rams are here. And I was one of the guys that said that the Rams were cooked last year before the season, just because I thought Matthew Stafford was almost out of there, just because I thought that Jalen Ramsey being gone, you know, I just I just didn't think that this team would be the same. Aaron Donald getting older. They showed last year they still here. They made the playoffs, barely lost to the Detroit Lions in the first round. This year, I think they got a chance to win the division. And I think this might be one of the teams that you might that I might have on the Super Bowl watch. Just saying. Super Bowl watch. I ain't saying making it. Super Bowl watch. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to our next topic. Uh, we've been talking about the AFC. We talked about the AFC West at first. Um, and the star of the AFC West and really the star of the AFC and low-key was well, the star of the NFL, right? Yeah, Patrick, and then low-key about it. Star of the NFL. Low-key, the star of the NFL, Patrick Mahomes, number 15, who is chasing Brady, right? That's the talk of it. But they're trying to get a 3 P. They're trying to go and get that third Super Bowl. So who is the biggest threat? to Mahomes chasing that third ring. From Mahomes getting the first ever three-peat in the NFL, who is the biggest threat? The biggest threat to Mahomes getting the getting that three-peat, which nobody's ever done, is Joe Burrow's health. Joe Burrow's health is the only, the only thing that I can see getting in the way of that team being a big threat to Mahomes. Since Joe Burrow's been in this league, he's the only quarterback that I can say that People throw around and say that he has Patrick Mahomes' number. If I'm not mistaken, I think Patrick Mahomes is one in three against him. I like to say he's one in three against him, which it's not. It's not. It's not really a good look. I know it's something that rubs Mahomes the wrong way whenever he has to go to sleep at night. The fact that people keep saying that Joe Burrow has his number, and so if Joe Burrow can stay healthy, looking at that team, looking at that roster, I honestly do think that they are a threat to Mahomes. I. I'm not saying that they're gonna beat Mahomes. I have Mahomes going back and winning, winning the Super Bowl again and completing the three P. But when it comes to the biggest threat, I think it is Mr. Joe Burrow because of what we've seen him be able to do in those big games against Mahomes. He's able to go toe to. He's one of the few quarterbacks that is able to go toe to toe with Mahomes in a big game situation. And we saw that. We saw that in the AFC Championship whenever he beat Mahomes. We saw that whenever. Patrick Mahomes beat him the year before this last season to get to the Super Bowl. We see that Joe Burrow and Joe Burrow versus Patrick Mahomes is turning into that Brady versus Peyton Manning. It's always going to be a game that comes down to just who makes the play to change the game. And so I do think that if Joe Burrow can stay healthy, seen last season he couldn't finish the season. We've seen that he's had injuries in the past that has kept him off the field. And whenever he's off the field, the Bengals are no threat to any team in the league. So if Joe Burrow can stay healthy, they would definitely be the biggest threat to Mahomes. And I and look, I like your answer, but my answer is different because I think Joe Burrow and them can go head to head when it comes to offense versus offense, right? I think they can put up numbers, but if a team will be a threat to Mahomes, they gotta be able to provide pressure. Right, they gotta be able to provide a pass for us. Outside of Trey Henderson, who else is doing that? And not only that, but in that defense in the hole, are you confident in the Bengals getting that stop that you need to get against them home? So you're gonna to have to step up eventually and make a play. 
You're going to have to. You can't just let Mahomes go back and forth with Joe Burrow. It's not going to end well. We saw it against Josh Allen in the playoffs a couple years ago. You can't just go back and forth. Somebody got to make a play. So do you trust the Bengals defense to make a play against Patrick Mahomes in the big moments? I don't, which is why I said that Mahomes is going to three-peat. That is why I say that because of the fact that the Bengals defense isn't isn't good enough to contain and hold Mahomes for that extra play that is needed. But like we've seen in the past, we've seen Joe Burrow find ways to knock off Mahomes. I mean, he's 3-1 and one against the man for a reason. So Joe Burrow is the biggest threat. His health is the biggest threat to Mahomes. All right. All right. I respect it. But I think there's a better answer. I do believe there's a better answer. And I don't care how anybody looks at me. Just, just hear me out when I say this. All right. I got four letters for y'all. J-E-T-S. Jets. 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 Last year when Aaron Rodgers went to the New York Jets, I came out and I said, this is the kryptonite for Mahomes. Unfortunately, four snaps into the game. My guy towards Achilles, out for the rest of the season. We did not get to see my evil plan go through. We didn't get to see it because my guy's gone. Well, he's back now. Okay, he's back. He brought some friends with him, okay? This is not the same Jets team from last year, all right? This is the Jets team that had added Mike Williams, who to me is the best one-on-one jump ball receiver in the NFL, arguably the best in the NFL. Can he stay healthy? That's another thing. If he can stay healthy on this team, they're going to be a problem. Tyron Smith just joined the team for practice a couple of days ago off injury, came from Dallas, future Hall of Famer and left tackle. He joined this team as well. They addressed the needs on the O-line. They drafted the O-line man in the first round. His O-line is ready. All right, you have Brees Hall in the back, who is a big play waiting to happen. And then you also got Braylon Allen, who I believe is going to be a good number two in this league. The Wisconsin running backs, there's something about him. I think he's going to be really nice behind him. Then you got Aaron Rodgers, who a lot of people say is washed. I don't know why. I don't know what y'all looking at. The last time we saw Aaron Rodgers, he was with Green Bay a couple years ago, and he had a bunch of young receivers, right? A bunch of new booties, right? That's what you want to call them, a bunch of new booties, right? And guess what? He skipped <laughs> He skipped training camp, right? He skipped it. My, Aaron Rodgers wasn't there. So throughout the whole entire year, he was trying to gain the chemistry, right, because he had problems with the front office in Green Bay. He was so busy trying to gain chemistry throughout the season that he couldn't have a good year. So that's why Aaron Rodgers was not Aaron Rodgers his last year in Green Bay. He leaves, comes to New York. This is a – and this is why I kind of pushed back on, this, on the Bengals thing because – I think this is a defense that can make stops in the big moments. We saw the Jets versus the Chiefs last year. The Chiefs barely beat the Jets, and the Jets had Zach. I understand what you're about to say. Oh, well, the Chiefs were just playing around because it's the regular season. It's early in the season, blah, blah, blah. But, no, this defense is legit. Now, I did – remember, we've been planning for this episode for a minute, so I kind of had this team before I heard about the whole Hassan Reddit thing, right? But let's just pray, right? Let's get down on our knees and let's pray that Hassan Reddit finds forgiveness in his heart and comes and play with the New York Jets. You have Hassan Reddick. You have Quentin Williams, right? You have Sauce Gardner back there. You got C.J. Mosley. You got Quincy Williams, Quentin Brother, right? You got Jermaine Johnson. They added Javon Kinlaw, who hasn't been that great. But let's see him on this D-line because for some reason, everybody – remember Bryce Huff last year, right, came to his D-line and started making plays? Maybe it's something about Robert Sala. We can bring – and mind you, Robert Sala coached Javon Kinlaw when he first came into the league, right? So then you also got – a Solomon Thomas who can rotate in. He's not a great, not a great defensive player, but when you're playing against a bunch of dogs, around a bunch of dogs, you can bring out some good, right? And he also had Will McDonald, who they drafted last year. This is a defensive line that they're gonna be coming after you all game because they have depth, right? And they can make them subs, they can keep everybody fresh. Then on the back end, you got arguably one of the best cornerback duos and Michael Carter and Sauce Gardner, right? And then, like I said, in the second level, you got Quincy Williams, who I'm a big fan of. He sideline to sideline. He's going to hit you in the mouth. And then C.J. Mosley as well. This is the defense that I think can make plays and make it hard for Mahomes versus a Bengals defense. Then offensively, I still think A-Rock can hoop. I don't know what everybody – I don't know what's going on with social media and, and what's going on with ESPN. Everybody's saying Aaron Rodgers ain't got it no more. I don't know who told y'all that because he still got it. And mind you, this was Mahomes before Mahomes. All right, so always remember that. There's, there, 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 was, there was 12 – before that was 15, okay? Always remember that. Well, he's number eight now, but you know what I meant. Yeah, yeah there's only um, there's only real 112. There's only 112 in the um, history of the NFL. Who's the best 12? Who's the best 12? Who's the greatest 12? Seven who's the best 12? Seven rings. Who's the greatest Seven 12? rings. Who's the greatest Seven 12? rings. Brady. Tom Brady. 
Brady. Tom Brady. Who's That's the fine. best? Who's the best twelve? Pure talent. I will give Aaron Rodgers the. He gets the nod. That's all okay. I need. That, I, I, that, That's I, okay. That's all I need. That's all I need. Mm-hmm. But bring this. Bring you to that. Brings you to this point, though. You're talking about the New York Jets defense. Sauce Gardner, Quinn Williams, Quincy Williams, C.J. Mosley. The list goes on, right? But do the does the Jets offense have enough for the Chiefs defense? Who's blocking Chris Jones on the O line? Who's blocking George Kalafis? Nick Bolton's filling those gaps, and he's coming to hit Brees Hall or um, who's the guy from uh, Wisconsin? You just said what? Uh, backup running back from Wisconsin for the Jets. Braylon Allen. He's coming to he's coming to fill the gaps to hit Braylon Allen. Yeah, Trent McDuffie, um, who is gonna put up a fight with Garrett Wilson, who is going to put up a fight with Mike Williams. You have all those pieces on that Kansas City defense. Does the Jets offense have enough to prevent the Chiefs from getting that stop that gives Mahomes the ball back with one minute at the end of the game for him to go down and end the game? Do they have enough? I believe they do have enough. All right. Outside of so with Mike Williams injury, you know what? I'm gonna cross my fingers here and I'm gonna knock on wood. I kind of hope he gets hurt early. I hope he gets hurt early. So he's Who said that? so wait, 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 hear me, hear me out. There's a method to my madness. I hope he gets hurt early. So he's there at the end. And another reason why I hope he gets hurt early is because they drafted a receiver named Malachi Corbin, right? If they can get him in to get looks. Then you add depth, right? Alan Lazard is a receiver that was there with A-Rod in Green Bay. So it's a little familiarity there. I want to know if Malachi Corley can come in and make plays as well. Then you have depth, right? So God forbid Mike Williams get hurt again, which we have seen. We've seen him get hurt, come back, then get hurt, and he out the rest of the season. Then you'll have somebody that can help Garrett Wilson now on the outside. But then you also, like I said, you have that explosive big play waiting to happen in Brees Hall in the backfield. So you can't just focus on the receivers. I got to have my eyes in the backfield. And then I got a quarterback that can put it anywhere he want to put it. You know what I'm saying? That That's the kind of guy he is. So, yes, they do have enough. I promise you they have enough. And I'm not saying it's going to be a blowout by any means. I'm not saying it's going to be – it's probably going to be a field goal. It's going to come down to a last-second field goal, A-Rod again, field goal range kind of game. Or Mahomes messed up at the end. Quentin Williams in his face. When have you seen that happen? Excuse me? When have you seen, when have you seen that happen? When does he play a defense like this? When have you seen that happen? When does he play defense? The past like two that? Super Bowls, he's played defenses that I can argue are better than this defense that he's about to go to and go against in the Jets. He played the Eagles defense who everybody everybody was going on and on about it. Going on and on about mm-hmm. the Eagles pass rush. Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes is unfazed on one foot. That man had yeah. one foot and still willed his team to a win. Yeah. Go against nobody San Francisco. You're right. Nobody got the quarterback because that Chiefs offensive line has knows that if they protect that man in the backfield, give him time to do what he needs to do, he can. And not only that, he's a problem when he gets outside of the pocket. So, yes, you say you can contain him, but inside the pocket, outside the pocket, on the ro- on the rollout, throwing back across his field, throwing with his eyes closed, Mahomes can do it all. So I don't think that seeing how he handled the San Francisco 49ers defense and the Philadelphia Eagles defense – I honestly don't think that there's a defense in this league that we can say is going to make it so hard for Mahomes that he doesn't put up the points that's necessary for his own defense to go out there and counter that. I think we just can. I believe you. You know that you remember that Super Bowl against Tom Brady where Mahomes just got terrorized the whole game? Terrorized. I can see the D line doing it, you know, because they have depth. That's my whole that's my whole entire point. They have a bunch of guys on the D line that can do it. Prayerfully, if Hassan Ready get it together with his contract, he's gonna be there. So that just gives me an extra boost. But even without him, I do believe they have a defense that's good enough to where Mahomes not finna have a field day. That's not gonna happen. He's not gonna just be He doesn't have to have one. He doesn't have to he doesn't have to be comfortable. He's with been the, comfortable being uncomfortable. Side, he's he's been side, comfortable being believe. uncomfortable. You say with A Rod on the other side, who says A Rod's gonna be able to be comfortable? Aaron Rodgers isn't a young buck anymore. I don't think, honestly, yes, he can still move around the pocket and move outside, but I don't think he has the ability, like Mahomes, to make plays outside of the pocket consistently anymore. He can still make these plays, but consistently because Chris Jones, we have seen in the past two Super Bowls and in big playoff games and moments, Chris Jones is that guy. 
he's going to come through for his team. He's going to come through for his coach and for his quarterback. Yeah, 100%. And I got a guy on the other side named Quentin Williams, who I believe is going to make that play at the end of the game also. He has the 49ers had Nick Bosa. The 49ers had a Nick Bosa. The Philadelphia Eagles had a Fletcher Cox and a Jordan Davis. They had Hassan Ray, who you're saying got added to the Jets defense. That's what you know I'm trying to tell you. Man. Mahomes you know has been man. against this time and time again. He knows what it takes to beat teams that's built like this. He knows what it takes. Jalen Hurts outplayed Mahomes in that Super Bowl. Right. Is, am I correct? So right. if Aaron Rodgers does outplay Mahomes, which is not going to happen, Mahomes will still find a way to will his team to victory. It's gonna happen. Just, just, just wait and see. Three peats loaded. Three peats loaded. Three peats loaded. That's crazy. Three peat is loaded. That is crazy. Well, that's why I have a counter for that. And that, that's that bad man, Aaron Rodgers, who I believe I just shut up a lot of people this upcoming season. You know, so, so is the Jets your Jets your Super Bowl pick? Hold up, brother. I ain't saying all you, that. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot right now. So Put you on the spot right now. Is the Jets your Super Bowl pick? A fully healthy Jets roster, which means no injuries this year. I'm, I'm getting what's on paper right now, right? Mm hmm. Yes. Why, yes, yes. That's all I had here. It's my AFC Championship matchup, my way. JTS, Jets, Jets, Jets. That's all I had here. I have respect for Mahomes. This is, this is my AFC Championship matchup right here. The same matchup that I had last year is going to be this year. God forbid injuries, right? Turn the injuries off, man. Turn the injuries off, and we good. Okay. Turn them off. That's fine. We're gonna <laughs> see. We're gonna see. But all right, let's go ahead. Let's get on to the next subject. Um, this year we have eight new head coaches in the NFL. All right, there's eight new faces in new places. Uh, me and Jerry gonna tell y'all who or what uh, first year head coach will have the most success. You want to go first on this one? Yeah, I'll go ahead and go first. Uh, like you said, we've been playing this episode for quite some time. And what I've seen in recent days has just confirmed my pick. It's Raheem Morris. Raheem Morris of the Atlanta Falcons. Looking at all the other head coaches and what they're walking into and seeing what he's walking into, that man, let's put it this way, that man has been blessed. He has been blessed because his front office has put him in the position to be successful. Now, also, another main reason why, before I get down into details of what that team has added and what they have, look at the division they're in. They're in the NFC South, who I can honestly say is the weakest division in the league. Having the Panthers, having the Saints, having the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it's a division where even last year, they were still in the run for the division. That division came down to the very end. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, He's walking into a roster who they've dropped some of the what people might consider dead weight. You know, they dropped Jeff Okuda, who um, they added him, and they thought that he would be a real game changer for them to pair alongside Aiden Terrell. He really wasn't, but that's okay. So they dropped him, um, but what they have added is they've added Matthew Judon and Justin Simmons in the past few days. In the past few days, they went ahead and added them, and they've really – they're trying to build this defense up to be – a game changer. They're trying to build his defense up to create havoc in that division. Now, yeah, you might say, look at the offensive situation that they have. They might have troubles there with Kirk Cousins, who they gave that big contract to, and we don't know the status of his health and if he's still capable of playing the way we saw him play in Minnesota. But what I do know is if we can see that Captain Kirk that we saw in Minnesota with Justin Jefferson, he's going to bring out. To, he's going to be able to bring out the talent in Drake London. And Kyle Pitts, he's going to be able to – now you have Bajan. You have Bajan Robinson. He's easily top five talent-wise running back in the league, talent-wise. So I just think that with that being said, it's not much that needs to be said on this argument. Raheem Morris is the guy that's going to have the most success in his first year. Uh, I – I love your pick, and especially like I said, after the couple past couple of days, adding Justin Simmons and adding Matthew Judon, they made up for the mistake they made draft night when they drafted Michael Penix. Not saying Michael Penix is the mistake. I'm saying that, that picking Michael Penix was the mistake because of the contract with Kirk Cousins and how old Michael Penix is. Um, we was arguing on my last on, the, on part one of the NFL about how you could have got the best defensive player on the board, anybody you wanted. 
right? Pick, pick your boys, who you want. But they went with Michael Penix, but they're making up for it by getting Judon, who can still make plays, getting um, Justin Simmons, who can still make plays. Uh, so I like your pick, but I'm going to go a different route. And I'm going to go with Jim. We just talked about him. I think, once again, <sighs> Mike McDonald was a, a pick of mine, but he has too much to compete with in the – in the NFC West with the Rams and the 49ers. He has no chance of beating the teams. The Chargers, all the noise was there when Jim Harbaugh got there, but ever since it's been too quiet. It's too quiet. This is more of a feeling pick than a than a factual pick. It's, it's, it's too quiet over there. And I feel like that's a good thing, right? This is a team that might catch you slipping. Now you might go into it thinking, oh, that's the Chargers. But everywhere that Jim has gone, success has followed. We just got to give him his flowers, right? We got to give him credit when the credit is due. He went to the 49ers. They instantly became a playoff team. They instantly became a Super Bowl contender, right? He went to Michigan. Instantly, they became a big school in the, in the grand scheme of things, right? It was all about Bama. It was all about Ohio State prior to that, right? They came in. They got in the picture quick, fast. Right, and they was able to win it all last year. So if everywhere he goes, success follows, why would it change now? Is my question. Right. So this is more so of I have more faith in um Jim. And I think Jim is the head coach walking into the best situation when it comes to the quarterback. Right. But Kirk Cousin, like you said, we don't know about his injury, right? We don't know how, how much that's going to affect his game. Uh, when you look at Mike McDonald going to coach Geno Smith. Right? We know what Geno Smith's ceiling is, right? This is the, we, we, Geno Smith not going to show us nothing that he hasn't already shown us. I mean, look at the Tennessee's new head coach walking into Will Levis, right? You look, it's, it's Antonio Pierce walking in with um, Garner Minshew, right? He's walking into the best situation when it comes to the QB. Now, the talent around the QB isn't there, but they shaky. beat up the old line Very shaky. Very shaky. But they got the old line together. And with Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, if they can stay, if J.K. can stay healthy, they have a nice little duo. We know them two very well, by the way, as still the fans. We know them very well. We know that with a good old line, they can cause problems. They can cause some issues. So I think this is a team that could be a surprise team. I think they can have the most success. And like, I'm not going to say Raheem Morris because you said, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that. You made a great pick. I just think that Jim, once again, we have to eventually just say, you know what? Jim is a really good coach. I have I have some pushback with that. I have, I have a little bit of pushback. Um, if you go and look at the if you go and look at their schedule, you have like I already said, you have to play Mahomes twice a year. You have yeah. to play the Raiders, who I feel like they're gonna end up splitting the game, and then they have to play the AFC North, the best division in football. And if we're being quite honest, I think that's four losses right there. That's just four losses right there. You have to play the Ravens. You have to play the Bengals, Steelers, and the Browns. Those are four losses right there because you don't have enough to compete with them, if we're being honest. So that's seven losses right there. Seven losses is not going to – seven losses plus the rest of your schedule, that's just not going to allow you to be the best new head coach. Now, there's nothing against Jim. It's just what they did with that team and who they have to go against. Like I said, the – um, Raheem Morris walking into the Falcons. You have one of the weaker divisions, if not the weakest division, in the league. So that is, that is easier to win. But for Jim, what is, what is your definition of him having the most success? Because I have Raheem Morris winning his division. So what is your definition of his success? What is it going to look like? A successful season for Jim Harbaugh is having a better record than they had last year. I think the team was better than it was. No, it was better last year than it is now. So if he can just eclipse that, then that's a great season. But sneaking into the playoffs is what I mean by a successful season. I believe, I'm a firm believer that it can happen. Will they, they have, have no chance season? to make the playoffs? They have no chance of making the playoffs. Have a you know why they have a chance? Because you just told me why about they their have schedule. A chance. You just told me about their schedule, right? You know who has the easiest schedule in the NFL? Who? The Atlanta Falcons. You know who has the second easiest schedule in the NFL? Who? The Chargers. Okay, so with a very easy schedule – with the great head coach, with the top five talented quarterback in the NFL, they can sneak into the playoffs. Is what I'm saying. There's not a chance. You have. Not there's not a chance. They can. So if they don't, you can't come back and say, "Oh, I told you so." I said they can. I said they could. You're right. They can. Any, any anybody can sneak into the playoffs. But they just they 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 literally can't because of what they have to go against. Mahomes taking one of the spots. They're not. They're not going to win the division. No, not even no. close. 
Oh. So that's four spots that's gone right there. And then and three, three wild card spots. I can we there's arguments being made that all four teams from the AFC North can make the playoffs. They won't but mind you. You're right. They can. Mind you, you still have a team like the Dolphins, who Tua is not a good quarterback. I just don't think he's a good quarterback. But there's enough talent down there in Miami for them to claim one of those wild card spots. You still have the Buffalo Bills, who obviously you're going to have the Jets win the division with them being your pick as the biggest threat to Mahomes. The Bills can still – Josh Allen has the talent and capability to get them to a wild card spot. And then a lot of people have – um hype around the Indianapolis Colts. And some people might even say the Jacksonville Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence. He has something to prove. I just don't think that them being in the AFC gives them a chance, a chance of making the playoffs. Real quick question. Real quick question. Last year, did you have the Texans going to the playoffs? I did not. Last year, did you have the Packers going to the playoffs? The Packers, yes. Because because of the conference they were in, Yes. The Packers yes. last year, the first year Jordan Love, you had you thought it was going to the playoffs. Yes, but I thought they were going to get like the seventh seed because of the conference they were in. That's cool. They're in a weak conference. That's cool. Did you have the Rams going to the playoffs last year? I honestly didn't. I honestly didn't. So we know that, and mind you, teams like the Colts that was one game out in the playoffs, right? So we we we're at the age now, and we've been watching the NFL long enough to know that things not going to go as planned. If that's, the case, if, every, if that's the case, then every single sports commentator would have it right. We would have it right because it's going to go as planned. Last year, we all probably had the Eagles going back to the Super Bowl last year. If not, you had the 49ers. But because of what happened the year prior, we had Jalen Hurts. Remember, he had the, the, uh, on his home screen, him walking, in the tunnel, him walking away from the Super Bowl game, right? We all had that confidence that it was going to go back to the Super Bowl. They lose in the first round. Did we have the Buccaneers ones in the playoffs last year? Negative. So, yes, you're right. There's no evidence with the roster or with the with the um, competition around them that the Chargers should be in the playoffs. There is no evidence for that. There was no evidence for that with the Texans last year. There was no evidence for that with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year. I thought it was going to be both top five picks last year. But they got into the playoffs because we're at the age now where we understand and we watch football long enough that – the, un- the unpredictable is going to happen. Somebody going to get in that we did not have getting in this year. Period. Like for example, the Bills might be no one seed this year. With with, and they should not be. They should not be. But you never know. Josh Allen might just come out here and be like, "Hey, y'all wrote me off a little bit too soon." You never know. Now I'm gonna keep doing my job and I'm gonna keep telling y'all what should happen, right? But I'm I've, I've watched the NFL long enough to know that somebody gonna squeeze in there with the second easiest schedule in the NFL. Out of 32 teams, you got the second easiest. I don't see why they couldn't be a surprise team this year. That's my point. That's all I'm saying. We're going to see. We're going to see. You're right. We close. We're going to see. Uh, two more topics and we out of here. Um, oh, and by the way, who is that? Third is the Chicago Bears and fourth. The fourth easiest schedule is the Jets. Got it. All right, um, next. That no, 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 that's not saying nothing about the playoffs. That's saying a lot. All right, next, we're going to go ahead and talk about who's going to be the most successful rookie this upcoming season. All right, Jared, go ahead and start it off with your rookie. Who's going to be the most successful this upcoming season? So, the um, rookie I got is being most successful. It's not so much as to him being the most talented at his position or the most talented person being drafted is the circumstance he's being drafted into. And that's Roman Dunsey. Roman Dunsey is walking in Chicago and he's going to be, let's be honest, he's going to be wide receiver three. You have DJ Moore who put up a thousand uh, yards last year and you bring in Keenan Allen who we know is going to end up being their wide receiver one. So now you're wide receiver three, but that's a good thing for you. As a rookie, we've seen a lot of receivers have a easy, smooth transition like Jamar and just Jefferson. But we've also seen, like your guy, uh, Quinn Johnson, seen them struggle and be labeled as a bust. And that's because of the – that's part of the circumstances you step into. But he's stepping into one similar to Quinn Johnson's. He's going to be wide receiver three. Um, teams are going to scheme against Keenan Allen and DJ Moore more than they're going to scheme against him. And he's a very talented receiver in his own right. And – Caleb Williams, known with him being a rookie, but he has this um, aura following him and this headline of him being a generational talent like a Patrick Mahomes. 
we know rookies tend to try to find that young target that they can build a connection with early. Luckily, we've seen them. They start to um, build a connection, a bond off the field. And from what I've seen in training camp, they've also built a connection on the field. So I think that Roman Dunsey is going to easily be the most successful uh, rookie. Yeah, I, I agree with take actually, because I do think that Roman Dunsey, by the end of this year, I think he'll be the number one receiver over there. That's how talented I think he is. I think he's going to be similar to what Jamar did his rookie year. I'm not poo-pooing on what Jamar did. I know what he did was special. I'm not saying it's easy to replicate, but I do think that Roma Dunsey has that in him. He had 1,600 last year with Washington, right, in a pass-heavy offense. Now you're about to be in a pass-heavy offense again with Caleb Williams, and like you said, he's at number three, so he's getting your third best defender. Good luck to him because he's going to get cooked. I promise you, Roma Dunsey is, is nice, and I think he's going to be really good in this league. Um, but I'm a that, that's who my pick was actually. So we're on the same page. But I'm gonna change it up and I'm gonna go with my second guy that I was gonna pick, and that's Drake May. Um, and this is not saying because he might not even play this year, is what I'm hearing. So I'm saying he's gonna be the most successful rookie throughout his career out of this draft class. I understand all the hype is around Caleb Williams, and I see why. I saw his first preseason game, I saw him in college. He's nice. So if he is what people say he's going to be. He, this team will be scary this year. It's going to be scary for the foreseeable future. But I think if the Patriots can manage this right, Drake May is not going to be the next Brady. That's a stretch. That's a big stretch. But he's going to be the face of that franchise for a long time. Um, I think they sold the bag with, with Mac Jones. And Mac Jones, to me, isn't bad. He's not a scrub. I think he can play a little bit. His first year in New England, post-Tom Brady, he got into the playoffs. Right, lost in the first round, but it went against the Bills, was probably the best team in the league that year, or best team in the AFC that year. Um, and then the next year, what did you do? You hired a defensive coordinator as the uh, offensive coordinator, Matt Patricia, right? And then you also had a special teams coach on the offensive coaching staff. Like Bill, I don't know what he was smoking or what he was drinking that um, during that offseason, but he messed up Matt Jones' progression. And then the year after that, you didn't add any weapons. You didn't add no weapons from his first year. Like, every year he played with y'all, he played with average weapons. You can't do that to a young quarterback, especially in today's game where it's a pass-heavy league. You need guys at the receiver position. Right now, the Patriots don't have guys at the receiver position. And from what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, they don't have guys on the O-line either. So they're probably going to sit Drake May out this year, and I think they're doing the right thing. You're not going to win anything this year if he plays. I don't care how good he is. So your team is just not that good. They also have the second-hardest schedule in the league. Right, so Gerard Mayo in the in the front office, I think they're playing this right, and I think they're gonna say, okay, Drake, we're gonna sit you out this year, right? Learn the offense. Jacoby Brissett, you go out there and die, basically. Go out there and get killed, right? We're not gonna that that that's what they're doing. That's why they don't want to put Drake out there, right? So then next year, get a receiver. Whether it's free agency, go go get him. You got rid of Matt um Matthew Judon, right? So you didn't have to pay him. Because he's 32 years old. So you got some extra cash. Go get a receiver. Go draft a receiver first round. Because Drake is your guy. I watched Drake up close and personal in North Carolina these past two years. And I do think that he's the best quarterback coming out of this class. He's also a guy that can sit back and throw the ball 30, 40 times a game, no problem. Because that's all UNC was. He, they wasn't running the ball well over there. He was throwing the ball around. So I think that if they can get the weapons around him, get the O-line right, they're going to be just fine. So I think he will have the most success through his career, not necessarily this year. If it was this year, I'm saying Roman Dunsey, right? But throughout their careers, I've got Drake May having a better career than Caleb Williams. Respectfully. Ooh, that's, 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 that's a Respectfully. very bold statement. Respectfully. That's a very bold statement. I think Drake is that guy, honestly. And I think that if Gerard can give us the same culture, not the exact same culture, but in terms of just how to run things like Bill, because he was under Bill. He coached under Bill Belichick. So if we can bring them same kind of morals and that same kind of mentality to this team, they're going to be just fine moving forward. Don't start playing around and trying to be this player's coach. Don't do that. I don't, I don't think you should do that. New England is New England. New England will always be New England. This is not a team that a lot of players will want to come to and, and you know play for like L.A. and stuff. It's never going to happen. So keep that same mentality, that same aura that they have in that locker room. And I think they'll be fine going forward. But right now, they just don't have the pieces. We just dogged out Denver for not having a good roster. We dogged out the Raiders. We dogged out the Arizona Cardinals. Look at the Patriots roster. That's bad. 
They best player is a corner. Kind of like You're Denver. Right. Christian, yeah, Christian. Exactly. Is, um, kind of nice. like Denver. Kind of like Denver. Like their best player is a corner. You can't win like that. That's the best player on your team. Right. So add pieces. You have a top five pick next year for sure. I'm stamping that. I guarantee they will have a top five pick. Get the best receiver in the draft. Just go ahead and do it. Get some guys around Drake. He's gonna be the best rookie moving forward. Not necessarily this year, but moving forward. All right. Don't get um, twisted though. Don't get don't get twisted now. They did um they went and got Jalen Polk and Javon Baker in the draft. Two wide receivers that I think if, if Drake is who you say he is, they're gonna be reliable targets for him. I Don't think they, I think they they gonna they gonna do some growing this year, right? Which is good, and I do think that like people gonna push back and say, oh, well, he should play just to get his feet wet, right? Kind of like Bo Nix, right? Bo Nix in a bad situation, but he getting his feet wet. I think it's different. If you don't have confidence in your old lines to keep your quarterback healthy and upright, then don't do it. Especially when you invested a top five pick in him. But I think he's gonna be nice. I think Drake's gonna be real nice. Don't mess it up. Do not screw him up. Right. Uh so Jalen Polk and Baker, they can be that second and third option, but I don't see neither one of them being a number one option. Is my thing. And it's too soon. Yeah, they can they can evolve and they can become great receivers. I'm saying it can't happen, but I just don't see it happening. Right. So next year, go get the best receiver in the draft. Or go pay for the best receiver in free agency. Get Drake or O line, then let him play. But I have no problem with his approach. Do you have a problem with the approach of him not playing this year? Um, I don't, but I just it's 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 unheard of. It's very uncommon. Put it that way. It's it's almost like a it's almost like a um, Vic situation with San Antonio putting on a minute restriction because they didn't see the team going anywhere this year. So, I mean, it's it's uncommon, but it might be what's necessary to keep him healthy if you know he's gonna be a future guy. Smart is Vic is Vic healthy right now? No, of course, you saw what he did to USA team. Vic, Vic healthy going to his second year, right? Yes. Good. So the plan worked, right? Yes. Boom. If you don't, if you do not have faith in your own line, do not put Drake out there. Simple as that. All you're gonna be doing all year is getting hit. What you're not gaining nothing from that. So I do see people's argument with play him, get his feet wet, this, that, and another. Kind of like what I just said with uh with Bo Nix about going through your progression. Now you have to, but if you don't have nobody to protect you, don't worry about it at all. Do not worry about that. And if you as a coaching staff, because they know they team more than we do, if you know they can't block, don't put them out there. All right, uh, to end this episode, kind of like we ended um, part one of the NFL vault, we're going to get a bold prediction from both of us. Mind you, these predictions are bold, okay? Last last time y'all saw us, D. Hill said the Titans going to the playoffs. That is bold. All right, so what is your bold prediction this year, Jared? I'm going to um, go against the green. I'm going to go right back in that division that D. Hill was in. Uh, the Colts will not have a good year this year. They won't. They will not have a good year this year. They're not gonna make the playoffs. They're not gonna. I don't think they're gonna come close. Um, here's one thing. We saw Anthony Richardson for a very limited time last year because he got hurt. When we saw him play, I don't know if maybe I'm maybe I'm tripping. Maybe my I need to go get my eyes checked out. But I didn't see that special. I didn't see what I saw from CJ Stroud. I just didn't see it. And I think that that is the that is the type of quarterback they're going to need to take that team to um, the playoffs and to have them in the running for that uh, AFC South. Now, mind you, they got the offensive coordinator from the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, what's his name? Your boy. Shane what's his name? Stikin. Shane Steichen. Great, great coordinator, great play caller. But he had Jalen Hurts, and let's give Jalen Hurts the credit that he deserves. Jalen Hurts is a good quarterback. I don't think Anthony Richardson can live up to that. Not only that, your best weapon is Michael Pittman Jr. Now nah, he's not. He's not. He's not trash. He's not mediocre. But he's not a guy that I can say is going to go out there and he's going to just hey, get him the ball. He's going to be special. Now, you do have a run game similar to what Philadelphia had. But I just don't think that they have enough. I don't think they have enough to compete with the Houston Texans, let alone with any of these other teams in the AFC to claim a um, – Playoff spot. I don't think that their defensive roster. They have some solid guys, but I don't. I just don't see from what I saw at Anthony Richardson last year. Mind you, he's coming back with an injury. From what I saw um, weeks ago when they first reported uh, camp, he wasn't even throwing the ball yet. He was doing the quarterback drills, but he wasn't throwing the ball yet. So I don't know what his status is. I don't know if he's going to come back and be the same player. Mind you, from what I saw. I didn't see the tangibles for him to have a C.J. Stroud type of um, 
year. Because let's just say it's almost like his rookie year again. Let's just get that straight. He wasn't able to finish his rookie year, so it's almost like his first year again, although he does have a little bit of experience. So I don't think that from what I saw to him last year, I just think that people are hyping him up a little bit too much because of he's like a – it's almost like a young Lamar Jackson kind of. You saw the explosiveness because of what he's able to do with his legs, and he has an arm. But I didn't see the reads. I didn't see the progressions. I honestly don't see the stats enough for you to say that he has what it takes to take this team to compete with the Houston Texans and to get a playoff spot with the talent that's in the AFC. So that's my bold prediction right there. The Indianapolis Colts would not have a good year and they would not make the playoffs. So let's say, let's make it, make it a little more bold because not making the playoffs could be, you know, by a couple games. Say they're going below 500. Below 500. Below 500. I, I said they would not have a good year. I do not think they would have a good year. I just don't. So you gonna go as far as top ten pick next year? You going top ten pick in the draft next year? I wouldn't say top ten pick because just because of just because of the other teams that are in the in yeah. the NFL. But with the hype that they have coming into this season, I just don't see it. Yeah, um, the only only pushback I have because I'm not a big AR guy either. When he came out the draft, uh, when he came out the combine, actually everybody was raving about his his combine. Raving about it, saying, "Oh my God, this might be the number one pick this year." What? When you why why are we putting so much value into the combine? Let's watch the tape. And is this a number one pick? No, but I do also believe what Max Kellerman said um, when he was on first take that basketball is a players' league. Are right, you going with players? Baseball is a manager league when you have the best managers. Now somebody's team going to win, and football is a coaches' league. Now, I'm not saying this coach team gonna be world beaters at all. I'm not saying that at all. But Shane Steichen, I have the argument that he's in Philly. Jalen Hurts is like a top five quarterback. He leaves. I'm a Jay Hurts guy, so I'm not dogging Jay Hurts by any means. But he leaves Jay Hurts, and the offense looks ugh, like it was wild. It was shaky last year. He goes to the Colts with less talent and almost made the playoffs. Without their starting quarterback, without their franchise quarterback in AR. So, with him now, like I said, health wise, I don't know his status. I don't know what's going on with that. But if he, let's say he is fully healthy by the time the season starts, can Shane make him look better than he really is? With what? With what around it? With, I, with what? With, with, with that, with the run game for one. With, yes. mind, they have arguably top three running back in the league. Mm-hmm. When he's healthy, yes. 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 Top three running back in the league, which means they also have a good old line. Michael Pittman is not – okay, Denver Broncos no more receivers, Cortland Sutton. I'll take Michael Pittman over Cortland Sutton. Like, they yes, like, yes, the number one receiver. He's not a number one elite receiver, but he can be a number one receiver. They just paid him so he can be a number one receiver. Josh Downs, somebody who, once again, I watched Drake May in college. He's nice. Josh Downs is nice, right? Josh Downs is nice. Um – Alec Pierce, I believe, is still there. Average, a little below average, average, right? So you don't have great receivers, but when you have legs, AR has legs. That's one thing he has. And I think that Shane can – can basically, my moral story is I think Shane can make him look better than he is. I agree with you. I don't think AR is that good of a quarterback. But why do you call him AR like Aaron Rodgers? Anthony Richardson, all right, I think Shane Sykin can make him look good. That's what I'm saying, basically. So I hear you. I hear you. They might not. Have, you don't want them to have. You don't think they're gonna have a good year, but I can see Shane making him look better than what he is. That's um, fine. That's fine. But it's still a team game. What did they do to get better this offseason? I saw the Houston Texans go get Stephon Diggs. They still have Nico Collins. Yeah. Tank Dale came back looking great. They added Daniel Hunter. That to me, that division is on locks. People think that when the Colts play the Texans, it's gonna feed generations. This year is just not. Okay, the Texans are going to go in there and they're going to have their way with that team because the yeah. Texans are just much more talented. We've seen other teams in the AFC get better. So from what I see, I see all seven spots locked up. And from what I see is you have to play these teams. You have to play the Texans twice a year. You have to play the Jaguars, who I don't think you can beat twice. I just don't think you beat the Jaguars twice. The Titans, mm, that's a different story. But I just, I just don't see them having a good year. I just don't because of the talent. In the whole roster, not just Anthony Richardson, but the whole roster. I don't think it's enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the optimism in the Indianapolis Colts organization is that we almost made the playoffs with Gardner Minshew, 
And they they're more believers in Anthony Richardson than we are. So I know they around it, they're like, okay, we barely missed the playoffs. We can we can definitely make the playoffs on Anthony Richardson back here. So I think mean, the optimism is there. Like I say, his health, that's a whole other thing. But I have so much respect for Shane that yeah, I'm gonna only disagree with the bold prediction because I have so much respect for Shane. I don't think they're gonna be as bad as you think. But I got you though. I got you. I'm not. I, I'm not fully sold on Anthony Richardson either. Uh, my bro prediction last week. I went the QB route and I said that Jordan Love is going to have a better season than a healthy Joe Burrow. I did. We said bold predictions. I was bold. Uh, this week I'm gonna be bold again. In 2025, around February, around Super Bowl, we end the season. Who could cool will be a top five receiver in the NFL? Wow. I said, you got Justin Jefferson, you got Jamar Chase, Devontae Adams, you got CeeDee Lamb, A.J. Brown, Tyreek Hill. The list goes on and on and on. But I think Puka will be a top five receiver in the NFL. Mind you, he's with a great O.C. He's with a really good quarterback, and he's with a really good receiver, which means either one, one or the other going to happen. Either Puka going to kill you or Cooper going to kill you. And if it's me, I'm more st- – Cooper is a triple cr- – he got the triple crown a couple years ago. That does not happen, right? So a healthy Cooper Cup, to me, is still scarier than Puka Nakua. So Puka should eat this year because he should not get that much attention or it's going to be the other way around. So let's just say – let's just say by the end of this year, a receiver from the Rams will be top five. Is that, is that okay? Or is that too? Is that, yeah, I, I, like, I like that a little bit better because that was going to – you saying Puka, it was going to bring me to another point. But I, I like that better. Bro, let's put it like that because like one or the other going to kill, going to eat, right? So by the end of this year, we'll be saying that one of those guys are in the top five. People have just took Cooper Cup out because of his injuries. But by the end, by the end of the year, we will say there's a Rams receiver in the top five. And the receiver, the receiving class, like the receiving, um, the receivers are top heavy. I said, there's a lot of dogs out there. Like, Amon Ross St. Brown has entered that top 10 conversation, right? You got guys like Garrett Wilson, who my argument is he's never had a quarterback, and he's still putting up numbers, right? You got Amon Ross St. Brown, him, like I said, C.D. Lambs, Harry Hill, A.J. Brown. You got all these receivers. I think by the end of the season, there's going to be uh, one of them Rams going to be in the top five. Is that bold enough or is that too broad? I feel like it's too broad. You saying Puka? You saying you saying Puka is yes, but if you say one of the Rams and it's, it ended up being Cooper Cup, I'm not gonna be surprised. Because I saw what he's done. Puka will. Be there you go. The there you go. Stay, stand, stand your ground. There you go. I will stand my ground. Stand Puka your ground. Will there you go. Be a top ten receiver. Top five. Top five receiver at the end of this year. There you go. Stand your ground. Because me, honestly, my pushback against that Puka and Kua. Hey, he's a dog. From what I saw from him, he's a dog. But if we're saying Cooper Cup's still going to be Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua has a great year to where we're saying he's top five in the league, that means Matthew Stafford has a chance to win MVP, honestly, because that means that both of them are going to be eaten. So. Would I be shocked if Stafford was in the MVP conversation? I would not. Last year, there was a quarterback in the MVP race, and it's really because of the players around him. Not throwing shade. Cause I you like, don't I, shade. I like you're the kind guy. of don't shade. No, you're kind of don't shade. I like you're kind of don't shade. No, he doesn't belong there. You're kind of don't shade. I like just, the guy, just, just a tad bit, just a little there's, bit. There's, there's somebody that was in the MVP race because he has a great offensive coach and he has weapons around him. Not throwing shade, and he's less talented than Matthew Stafford. We can be real on that. That's yeah, not shade at all. That's true. Of course. So can Stafford be in the MVP conversation? Now you're not gonna win it. MVP conversation with two number one receivers with. A, a running back just had 1,100 yards with Shami Bay calling the plays? Sure. Not. You want, you want me to change that to my bold prediction? Is that more bold? That's very bold because I already know who I got winning MVP. I think it's not even going to be close. All right, so give me the – give me the, okay, you know what? No, I can't do that because I, I kind of have Jordan Love winning that, so I can't do that. But, yes, my bold prediction is Puka Nakul will be a top five receiver at the end of the season. Your bold prediction is the Colts will be below 500, all right? That's it? That's cool? Yeah, that's fine by me. 
All right, y'all, that is it for today for the NFL Vault Part 2. Um, y'all will be seeing Jared Moore this upcoming season. Uh, throughout the season, y'all will be seeing him. Um, but that is it, y'all. We are about to close the vault. We out.